Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters, welcome back to my channel. Today I am uh, doing the next instalment of my What's Worth It series. This is a series where I test out all of the products in a specific makeup category that I own. So I'm tackling powders in this video. And look, I'm just going to put it out there, I kind of struggled with this one. Powders, easy to use, it's fine. You. Uh, you know, I use it every time I put makeup on. Um, but my skin's been very dry. <laughs> so, um, wearing these powders, many of them, which I would say are actually better for oily to normal skin, um, and not using like a setting mist to sort of rehydrate things, made it quite difficult for me. Um, but I got through it, and I, you know, I've got feelings. Why are you crying? What are you crying about? So I do have feelings about the products here. Um, I don't think I'm going to get rid of much because I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm looking at my, my pile in front of me and I'm like, I just don't, um, it's not much I want to get rid of. I'm just going to be straight up. So I did test out these products over the uh, L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation. I did not put a primer under that foundation and I did not set or rehydrate any of these foundations with face mists. So that was my basis. Um, let's start with one thing I do know I, I want to get rid of. It is actually this guy. It's the Revolution lace baking powder so the reason why i opted to get rid of this one is because she's still sealed and i have 28 face powders here um and i thought you know what i am going to make it easy on myself and just declutter any that i'm not super like keen to try not chomping at the bit to try that are unopened and this was the only one that I had. So that guy is going. I haven't tried it. I don't know if it's good. If you have tried the Revolution Lace Baking Powder, um, let people know what you think of it in the comments um, because I can't. Okay, let's go through my Hourglass powders first. Um, these were the ones that I was like, these are going to be the ones that I enjoy the most, uh, because they are great for dry skin, but uh, not, uh, not always the case. I'm just putting it out there, especially with this one. This is the Hourglass Avail Translucent Setting Powder. So my notes on this said, it's glowy, which it is. This offers a really beautiful glow to the skin. But it makes me look greasy even when my so my skin is so dry, it is shedding and flaking off my face. So that was the dryness level of my skin while I was testing out these foundations. Just so you're, like we've got a baseline there of how dry I was. Um, so I find this powder quite interesting. I bought it when I had oily skin and... I was shocked at how greasy it made my skin. Um, but even as a dry person, this somehow makes me look greasy. Not like initially when you put it on, it's glowy and it's beautiful. But after a few hours of wear, it looks greasy. And my skin doesn't produce oil. <laughs> so I don't know how it does it. It's like bad magic, basically. Um, you might think, well, get rid of it, Haley. I can't. <laughs> I can't bring myself to get rid of it. Maybe I will in the future. Maybe, you know, when I pop this in a project pan and I'm using it consistently, I might just go, right, I've had enough. But at this point, I'm finding it very difficult to get rid of because it was expensive. I do love the packaging. And I do love it for short-term wear. It looks really beautiful on the skin when you put it on initially and you just wear it for a couple of hours. And there are days when I only need or want my makeup to last a couple of hours. Um, I'm also wondering if I might have better luck using this with different foundations. And that is... Oh, that is one of the big reasons why I don't want to get rid of I don't think I'm going to get rid of any more of these powders. I'm just putting it out there. Um, 
I would really like to test them with more foundations and with setting mists. Now the reason why I didn't do it in this video is because then it, it blows out the testing. Like it already took me well over a month to test all of these um, and I don't want it to then take three months to test them out with different foundations and putting face mists on them. Like I'm just not I'm not here for it. I'm not, I'm not that invested. Um, I just wanted to go through and see what I enjoyed on my skin at this current time. So there will be more testing for me going forward. Maybe my opinion will change on this one, but initially I think this just makes me greasy and I don't actually know how it manages to do that. It's like magic. I think I'll continue on with hourglass foundations and next we will start to do like the ambient lighting powders. So in this palette it is the ambient lighting edit in surreal light we have the ambient lighting powder in surreal light which is this one here so i have a whole bunch of others here that i'm going to talk about and in terms of their colors this is the one that i would consider closest to like my actual skin tone so very similar to the powder that i just showed you the loose powder this is a bit more sparkly i suppose not as sort of i don't know if you'll really be able to see it not really um not as subtle in its glow as the uh the loose powder now i don't mind this it's not something that i can wear all over because when you go outside you look like a glitter bomb and it's weird it's not i shouldn't say a glitter bomb i feel like in comparison to the translucent veil powder you look like a glitter bomb um it is very very like fine glitter but it you can see it it sparkles and it's a bit it just looks a bit odd now i like to put this on the high points of my face when I'm like not really going for a highlight but I do want some sort of glow or sheen in a particular area so if I'm using let's just say for example like the Laura Mercier um veil uh, no sorry translucent loose setting powder if I'm putting that all over and it's sort of like a you know a matte powder and I'm just ducking out to the shops but I would like to like pick up the high points of my face without actually highlighting that's where this sort of powder comes in and it's not the sort of powder that I am going to be like oh I hope I can buy this in like a full size individual when I finish it and it might take me 15 years to finish it but there are times when I like it and I do like to have a little bit of diversity in my powders. I'm not going to talk about these coloured powders over here. I will come back to them when I do my coloured face palette videos. Oh. Let's continue on with Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. So I have three full size here and a mini. The mini is Dim Light, which I do have in the full size. So Dim Light, look... I don't know it might look like it would be fine as like a finishing powder for me um and i guess maybe in summer i could wear it i can't say i've ever tried to wear this as a finishing powder in summer because you know oily skin previously however maybe 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 i could get away with it but how i actually really like to use this is as a light bronzer when I'm doing a no makeup makeup look I think it looks stunning like just beautiful a lot of the bronzers that I own when I put them on and I'm going for a much more subtle look um, they're not <laughs> not what I'm going for this is what I'm going for so this one I'm keeping for sure I'm keeping the mini I actually really enjoy this product and to be honest if I finished this and I didn't have another bronzer in my stash that I felt could sort of cover the base of this, I would buy it again. I really enjoy it. Mood Light is the next one I have, and this is sort of a purpley, mauvey version. I would say this looks ridiculous if I try and put it all over my face. It makes me look really ashy and strange, but 
<laughs> she's beautiful as a subtle no makeup blush so that's what I'm gonna keep this one for I am gonna put this one into like my makeup stash uh, sorry my makeup stash it's already in my makeup stash in my blush stash and I'm gonna put dim light in my bronzer stash and I'm gonna use them that way uh, then we have ethereal light now ethereal light is basically the white one now Again, not using this all over my face because it makes me look strange and unwell, um, but I really like it. So there's this technique you can do um, with like, you know, pale concealer or concealer that's lighter than your skin tone. For me, I just consider it pale. Um, and basically what you do is you put it on some high points to lift the face basically and you can do it a lot around the eyes and it gives you that nice sort of cat fox eye kind of vibe now when you're doing that you're using a concealer or like a cream product that is two to three shades lighter than your actual skin tone and when you're setting it you do have to be careful or if you want to set it uh, you do have to be careful not to use a powder that has too much coverage even like a translucent powder it it can really like sort of destroy the work that you've done with the brightening lifting effect that's where something like this comes in handy because it is a very light powder and it is translucent you can see the swatch there but if we blend it out it basically turns into nothing with just an ever so slight lightening effect and that is because it has little like mica pearls in it that reflect light so it also helps to highlight those areas further and bring them out with that slight like I wouldn't call it shimmery or like traditional highlighty effect but it it sort of like reflects light more than a standard you know matte or demi matte powder would so I don't see this getting a whole lot of use this isn't something that I would reach for on like a standard makeup day this is something I would reach for in very specific situations when I'm doing specific makeup techniques and those techniques I don't do often they're kind of special occasion type things when I'm going for a particular look but if I get rid of this I actually do not have another product that does the same job as this one does and as well as it does so I'm keeping this one as well would I run out look this will last me a lifetime honestly this will go bad before I can finish it um, and I would aim at actually owning a mini of this if I could get my hands on it kind of like the mini dim light um, because I don't feel like this I don't need this much of this product but I'm not going to get rid of it. So they are my hourglass powders. They have a place. They are not all rounders though. Okay, how about we do some MAC powders? Uh, this one here is the MAC Prep and Prime Translucent Powder. It's from the Chris Chang collection. So that tells you how long I've had it. This is actually a really, really fantastic powder. So it, as you can see, it looks white um, and it does similar to the hourglass one. Um, it, you know, it can leave a little bit of a cast on your face if you use a lot of it. But what's beautiful about this product is you don't need a lot of it. A tiny, tiny bit of this product will set your face. Now, the way that this one and the, I think the ethereal light, is that right? Yes, ethereal light. The way they differ is this doesn't have the sheen that ethereal light has this is just like straight matte now look I probably won't use this much straight up it is what it is but I will still never get rid of it because I bought it specifically for the packaging so this is one that I will keep for the packaging regardless it's beautiful I I love it I love it I make no apologies that sometimes I keep makeup just for its packaging and nostalgia feels it is what it is and the other mac powder that i have is the mac patrick's powder i have three of these yes i have three of them 
I don't know how it happened, but it did. I've said this a million times, I'll say it again just because I'm here and I want to. The packaging is so atrocious. It's bad. I mean, look at it. You can tell it's bad. When it's closed, it's absolutely stunning and I love it and it's very festive. It was released uh, in one of the holiday collections and I just like... <sighs> I do love the visuals of the packaging, but functionally, it's terrible. Now, the powder itself, it is quite matte on the skin. It does lock things in really well, but I found it was um, drying in my T-zone and that can feel a bit uncomfortable when I'm dry anyway. Um, it does stay matte throughout the day. Well, that's probably not something that I should comment on because I'm not... An oily skin person so ignore that but for me it stayed matte throughout the day um this isn't okay for starters i can't buy this exact one now i believe mac do actually sell this powder it's called something else in like their normal collector i don't know i don't care that much um i'm gonna hold on to these i might try and pan one next year uh and see how i go with it and that will help me to determine you know what what I'm going to do with the other two. I'll probably always keep one for the packaging. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, unless I decide that I love this powder, I don't need three of them. I'm just putting it out there. But that problem is going to be, you know, determined whether I, I keep them or not on another day. Should we do something bougie? Should we do this? This is a Shantakai Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. Oh, I bought this for all of the reasons. The packaging, the Shantakai bougie-ness, the appearance of the powder because I was like, oh, it looks beautiful. Um, it was also getting really good reviews. Now, what's interesting about this powder is it goes on my face. It looks a little bit peachy, which isn't ideal for me because it does make my foundation look a little bit off, particularly the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow. But to be fair, that foundation is like a shade too dark for me anyway. They discontinued it in Australia. I stocked up on what I could get. It is what it is. The problem that I have with this is obviously bougie, expensive, beautiful packaging. Don't want to get rid of it because of that. But also it looks really beautiful on the skin. <laughs> Oh, it looks so smooth and lovely. Um, and I can see there being situations where I can get away with the wearing this. And I, I am going to try and do that. So I am also not getting rid of this, which is not a perfect product for me. But I enjoy it anyway. Oh, God. Okay, let's talk about another bougie one, which I'm not going to get rid of. Look, if you're sitting at home watching this and you're just like, Hayley, get rid of it. I know, I'm sorry, but I'm not... <laughs> you guys know, if you watch my declutters and how I declutter things, I don't believe in getting rid of things that I'm a little bit on the fence about or struggling to let go of, because for me it results in more bad purchasing choices. Um, but we have to talk about the Tatcha Silk Powder. They promised they promised that this was everything for everyone and it would fix all of your skin problems and make you look beautiful and amazing and young and vibrant. <laughs> um, it doesn't, not for me anyway. So my experience with this, bleh, my experience with this was that it, uh, it sat, it looked like it was just sitting on my face. It didn't appear that it was sort of becoming one with my foundation basically. I do want to test this out further with setting mists to see if I can, um, you know, make it look nicer because I feel like I probably can. Um, I just need to find the combination that makes this work basically. And also I think coming into warmer weather I'm hoping that my skin starts to improve with dryness and also I think that will play a part in a lot of these foundations looking better on my skin. If I was to declutter every single powder that I had even like the smallest issue with I would be left with like two or three powders so okay maybe maybe six. 
Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to continue on with it and see how I go in the future. Okay, Laura Mercier translucent, loose finishing powder, setting powder, translucent, loose setting, setting powder. So I have two of these. I think one is unopened or did I open them both? I think I've opened them both. Oh no. Shit. Which one was in my project pan then? Oh no. I think it was this one. Yeah, because it feels lighter. Uh, okay, so I have two of these. I actually love this powder. I think it's beautiful. So my notes say it's a really nice setting powder, not overly drying, and it wears well all day. Now, the not overly drying part is probably, like, the most important thing for me because if I can put a powder on my face and not feel like it is drawing the non-existent moisture out of my face... It means I can wear my makeup comfortably all day and it's not something that I have to fuss over. Uh, I don't have to have anxiety about am I doing like the right skincare routine for the makeup that I'm going to put on my face today or you know do I need to worry about this making my skin flakiness look worse all of that stuff. So I really like this powder it's one that I feel like I can rely on at the moment and it doesn't stress me out when I go to use it so <laughs> there's that I really love this powder I think it's it's a cult powder it's been around for a long time there's a reason why it is still on the market it is good I would say that it doesn't get as much attention as I personally feel that it should um, but you know if you're in the market for a loose powder I would consider this one it is 29 grams as well so she gonna last you a long time next up I have my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish skin perfecting micro powder in the shade 2 medium now I will say this is a, a tad bit too dark for me but I am going to hold on to it um, for summer. I do find I've had experiences with this in the past where I feel like it oxidizes when I put it over some foundations. Over the um, Infallible Pro Glow it's absolutely fine. I, I mean it's a little bit dark for me so I, like I said I think it's a summer shade um, but it doesn't oxidize. Some foundations though this has gone like straight up orange on me which I think is interesting um, I'm not too sure why it does that but there's that other things that I noticed with this it looks really beautiful on the skin so that's a pro um, and I didn't find it to be like you know sucking the moisture out of my skin so it has its pros it has its cons um, I just think picking, picking the right time of year to use this for me and the right foundations to pair it with is really going to be the key. I do think that this one I would actually be able to pan in the future. Next up is the Maybelline Superstay Powder. This is in the shade 10 Ivory. So, ugh, there we go. Um, this is... For a mattifying powder, when you put it on, it's quite light. Like, it feels light on the skin, not light in colour, although, you know, 10 ivory is fairly light. Um, so it feels light on the skin. It doesn't feel too heavy, heavy or anything like that. Um, it's not visually appealing over dry skin. It really accentuated, like, the, the flakiness in my forehead. Um, but it didn't feel overly drying, which was nice. Um, I... <sighs> gosh look this is one that I'm like I'm gonna see if I can pan this and you know if I if I get through panning it, it's not one that I would buy again um but also if I was panning it and at any stage I decided you know what this isn't working for me I wouldn't have an issue getting rid of it so there's that that's what I'm gonna do with that one okay let's talk about this one which I okay I put this off towards like the end of testing out uh, my fa my powders because I thought this is not going to work for me. I know that this has been designed with oily skin people in mind and as an oily skin person I loved this powder and I thought I am not going to be able to wear this. It's just not going to work for me. <laughs> I was so wrong. I was so wrong. This powder is... Um, really fucking fantastic it's a nakia joy cosmetics velvet finishing powder so my notes on this were gorgeous 
I loved this on oily skin and it's still beautiful on dry skin. It's not too drying or heavy and it didn't make my skin feel like... <laughs> this was surprising. Um, I'm keeping it. I love it. Oh lord, this is what happens when you've got all your powders floating around and you're holding them up and you're shaking them and oh god. I'm going to have a nightmare with all of these loose powders when I get around to using them again. So I'm not going to get rid of this, so I'm going to keep it, I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to let it surprise me every time I use it. And uh, Nakia, if you can turn this into a pressed powder, you should. Next up I have the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. This is in the shade 10 Fair Light. It's currently in my project pan. It's okay. I would say this is excuse me burping it is better for oily skin than it is for dry um i think it would be fine on normal skin as well um look it's in my project pan so i'm trying to you know finish it up and i don't mind it like i wore it today and it's okay um i wouldn't repurchase it though i bought this after it got major hype when it released everyone was like oh my god it is like the best thing since last bread and like it's not it's just a fucking finishing powder <laughs> like and, but that that's what hype does that's that's what hype does you get sucked into it and then you realize guys have you never used a fucking loose setting powder before because this is the same as all the others that are just average. I'll see how I go with panning it, but I wouldn't buy it again. Um, let's do the Australis Fresh and Flawless. So I have decluttered a bunch of these that were unopened. Um, and I did that, I think I did that at the end of last year when I did my like inventory and collection videos. Um, or at some stage I've decluttered them. Anyway, this is one that I had like had use on. Um, and again, this falls into the category of I'm gonna try and finish it and then I won't buy it again. Uh, simply because it's designed for, you know, young skin that produces oil. Um, and I don't have that anymore. On dry skin, this is not nice. It's not comfortable, it's not great. I'm gonna see if I can, you know, get some use out of it in summer with the you know the hope that my skin will improve um but basically like my notes say that on dry skin it like sucks the life out of my skin um and it looks a bit too heavy and it accentuates fine lines but i've used this when my skin is more normal and balanced and then it's not bad it's not amazing but it's not too bad so you know i just don't i think like you know you get to a point where there are certain more affordable or like not so um the ingredients aren't super refined or you know designed to sort of nurture your skin you get to a point where you you can't really use those products anymore and i've reached it and it is what it is and i, I don't i'm not i'm not too bothered by it kat von d blotting powder so this is another one that surprises me um I bought this, I actually got Simon to buy this for me, the Skincare Obsessive, many years ago. It's telling you how old this product is. I don't care, I'm not getting rid of it. Um, I got him to buy it for me while he was overseas and this was before, no, we had Kat Von D in Sephora Australia. Sephora Australia, I think, had just come to Australia. Um, in like within like the last 12 or 18 months um, but we weren't getting all of the new products at the same time as the rest of the world and I really wanted to try this powder and he bought it back for me and I love it I loved it then I love it now as an oily person my god this is beautiful it makes the skin look really smooth it doesn't go on heavy it helps to absorb and like get rid of any oil without getting thicker on the face throughout the day so you can actually use it to touch up and like get rid of the oiliness um it's fantastic and then as someone with dry skin uh okay i don't ever use it to touch up because i don't get oily but it 
it still goes on really really light it sets the foundation really quickly with just a tiny bit of product and it doesn't accentuate fine lines or dryness i love this product i love it i don't know if kat von d uh sorry uh kvd <laughs> whatever they're called I don't know I do not even care um I don't know if they still make it if they do good I'll probably buy it again it's did I mention it's the locket blotting powder I've got the shade light you can see I've hit pan on it I use it very sparingly um and I the reason why was because you know when there was the drama I was like well I can't buy off that brand anymore it's like it goes against what what I believe in um, so I need to treasure what I have and look times have changed so I could repurchase it I love that powder I think it's fantastic and it's one that surprised me similar to the Nikia Joy powder where I thought it would only be suitable for a certain skin type but it actually works really well for me across the board so there we go. All right, I'm down to my last seven powders. Let's get into it. Let's do the Nabla Close Up Smoothing Pressed Powder. This is in the shade Light. So there, there she is. I really like this powder. Now, when I do these uh, projects, essentially what I do is I make a list of all of the items that I have in a spreadsheet uh, in that particular category. And then as I go through them, I make notes and I mark them with a specific color tag. I have green, I have orange, and I have red. And I think you can probably guess what they all mean. This one I marked as green. Um, oh, and if you want to know what, or well, red means get rid of it. Green means keep it. Um, and orange means mm, you might want to finish that and not buy it again. Or you might want to try and finish it, but declutter it if you get sick of it. So that's what my traffic light system means, basically. Anyway, this one. My notes say it sets makeup well, doesn't look overly dry or make my skin feel dry, which is like the most important thing. Um, it doesn't stop creasing, but my creasing wasn't worse than it usually is, which you would think the powder would prevent creasing. It's not always the case. Um, so this one I enjoyed. It gets extra points because it is a pressed powder. It gets extra points for pretty packaging. Uh, but the number one priority is I really like the powder inside. I would buy that again. I really enjoyed it. I do have another Nabla powder here. This is the Close Up Baking and Setting Powder. This is a loose powder. So automatically it falls into a category of more, you know finicky to use um but i kind of i i feel like this is better um i feel like this is just okay it looks okay it's not great it doesn't have any features that make me go oh that's a nice powder and i i look forward to using that again in the future for me this is kind of like a means to an end powder like i just need to set my base and that's the end i it's not going to do anything to improve the way things look for me, but it also doesn't do anything to make it worse. Um, so I wouldn't buy this one again, but I'm going to hold on to it. And like I said, you know, in the future, I'll chuck it in a project pan at some stage and I'll use it. And if I, you know, decide, yeah, it's okay, I will finish it. And if I decide at some stage that I'm I'm over it or it's just not working for me, then I'll get rid of it. Let's move on to the Shiseido, uh, what is this called? Synchro Skin Radiance Powder. This is, look, I feel like I need to show you what she looks like inside. So this is, it's got like a, it's almost like stocking material. It's, it's a mesh top basically um, and you take your brush and you like bounce it in there and it deposits just a tiny bit of product onto your brush now I actually really like that for a loose setting powder because half the time I open up a setting powder and it looks like this or like the Nikia Joy one that we saw earlier where it's just like this excess of product and then I need to like you know 
and dip my brush and then tap it off in the cap or tap it in a tissue or in my hand or whatever um, and I do feel like there is actually a lot of product lost that way um, I'm not really into wasting makeup but it happens uh, and I do feel like loose powders are a notorious product for that and it can be very easy to apply too much if you don't tap off your brush adequately I don't mind this mesh uh, dispensing method because it gives me so much less product um, I do think that you know it's a very refi refined powder so you don't need the tiniest tiniest amount to set your foundation um, you might find this packaging really annoying if you use you know a fairly large not a large amount but if you use a lot of powder to set your foundation you could very well find this packaging annoying and I wouldn't blame you um, but for me I like it it's a pro it's one of those small features that actually makes me like the product more um, I also wouldn't say that this is really all that great as a setting powder for me it's fine because I'm not you know I don't put on a lot of makeup um, my skin sucks the moisture out of most products that I put on my face and sets them anyway so I only need a little bit I would say that this is actually better as a finishing powder it does give a really beautiful luminosity to the skin and that is something that I quite like these days I like my skin to look glowy er <laughs> because um, I just think it you know it it just looks nice it's it's what I like my skin to look like so this one I enjoy yes the the packaging could be annoying though so please keep that in mind if you are checking this product out um, okay let's do this guy which I've had forever and it tastes like peaches yes I said taste it tastes like peaches it also smells like peaches um, <laughs> And yes, I've tasted it. This powder will get in your mouth. Um, so, I like the packaging on this one as well. This lid is cool. You, you screw off this lid and then you're left with this little flap that prevents the product from going everywhere. It's genius. It's genius. Oh, you smell delicious. I really like this powder. I do think that this is better suited to oily skin. Um, but on dry skin... I was fine with it I would definitely want to rehydrate it with like a face mist to bring some moisture back into it but overall it didn't make my dryness look worse it didn't feel like it was drawing moisture out of my skin it's just a nice refined setting powder and also there's 35 grams in there I don't know if this is one get out fly that was rude I don't know if this is one that I would repurchase in the future. It'll probably take me my whole life to finish it up. Uh, but I don't hate it. And I do look forward to using it further in the future. Okay, let's talk about the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance uh, Pressed Powder. Honey, I used to love this. I got pan on it. Um... If you've got oily skin and you're a little bit older, like me, get this powder. She's beautiful. It's lovely. Even if you have young, plump skin, get this powder. It's beautiful. If you have dry skin, you might not get along so well with it. I was a little bit sad when I used this. Uh, I suppose for the opposite reasons that, like, I, you know, had a great experience with the Nikia Joy powder I thought that this would be fantastic for my dry skin but uh, I didn't it didn't really hit the mark I think because it does feel a little bit drying like it's you know sucking the moisture out of my skin I feel like I'm saying that so fucking much I feel like a broken record in this video and it's it's even starting to annoy me. I don't think this is one that I would buy again. But as with all of the powders in this video, I do look forward to testing them out further. Uh, because I think, you know, powders are hard. Look, I'm just putting it out there. Powder is one of those 
parts of my makeup routine that I'm picky about and my skin changes so often uh, it's hard to really determine what what is amazing and what just needs certain situations to make it work you know what I'm saying anyway I don't know if I would repurchase this again maybe maybe not probably not at this point if I had to make a solid decision at this point if it was life or death I would say no I wouldn't buy it again but I might change my mind in the future so there we go um okay let's do the canma I dropped it I hope I didn't break it <laughs> Nope, she good. Okay, this is the Can Make... What's it called? I don't know. It's I just wrote down Can Make Face Powder in 01. So, this is uh, designed for oily skin. What is it with these oily skin powders that is just surprising? I, I don't know. So, this powder offers a nice blur to the skin uh, because it has these like micro micro fine little mica bits in it that like make it not you can't see it makes it not a hundred percent matte but also not actually like shimmery at all um, I also said that it feels a little bit dry it is supposed to be oil controlling but my face got shiny after about six hours of wear so there's that um, I do suspect that this one might be something that could work in place of the hourglass ethereal powder in that like you know using it to sort of set a cream highlight maybe i i don't know maybe i didn't test that out but i would like to test that out in the future i'm gonna hold on to it i'll see how i go last one this is the linda holberg infinity filter loose setting powder in the shade medi medium uh so i would definitely say again this falls into the category of probably better for me in summer because I think it's a little bit dark but if I manage to get some sun this year um I might I might be very glad that I kept this my notes were it allows radiant foundations to shine and it doesn't mattify too much it also doesn't feel too drying and I had no changes in the amount of creasing that I usually get uh, but the only downside was it's a little bit too dark for me but again I just explained that situation it is what it is maybe it will be useful for me in the coming months so this one stays I am only getting rid of one as I mentioned at the start of this video that leaves me with 27 foundations I look forward to trying to pan some of these I think it's going to be quite difficult for me because most of them are loose most of them contain a large amount of product you know even the um the nabla one while this looks quite small it still contains 30 grams of product and this guy contains 35 so you, you know <laughs> there's that shiseido how much is in here does it say six grams so you know that would be easier linda hallberg nine grams so I think they are going to be quite difficult for me. Um, wait, this is 11 grams? I mean, it's not now because I've hit pan on it, but that contained 11 grams. And the Nabla, what was that again? 11.5? Oh my God. All right, I'm shocked. I'm shocked and I'm shooketh. Look, I just have to throw everything that I know about panning uh, powders out the window right this second because I I mean I can go through one of these guys from start to finish in like two to three months wow okay well anyway there we go so it shouldn't take me all that long to finish this guy then because there's less in here than there is in here by almost half all right well look Good luck to me <laughs> i look forward to panning some of these uh powders and i also do look forward to um making this collection smaller over the next i don't know probably 12 months and maybe one day being able to buy a new powder <laughs> i definitely do want to hear your opinions on these products if you've tried any of them out um because i think you know 
depending on your skin type, um, powders feel, react, and look very different on different skin types. So if you've tried any of these and you love them or you hate them or you're indifferent about them, let us know down in the comments and maybe be like, hey, oily skin, tried the Peach Perfect, actually hate it. Or dry skin, CoverGirl Advance Radiance, fucking love it. Like, whatever it is, all opinions are valid when it comes to makeup because it's all subjective. And I just want it to be like helpful information for other people who are like looking into any of these products. Also, and this is the selfish part of the video for me, please let me know if you have dry skin and you're a bit more on the mature side, please let me know what your all time favorite powders are because I'm not even going to lie. I am totally open to buying a couple more powders to test them out, like right now, right this very second. So let me know. I might make a list. I might buy more powders. <laughs> Judge me. It's fine. I'm judging myself. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be back with another one of these ASAP as soon as I can. Um, and it's going to be my coloured face powders. Uh, sorry, coloured face palettes palettes powders will eventually come later but palettes so it's going to be palettes that have like bronzer blush and highlight combos in them and then i will do individual videos for bronzer blush highlight they will all be their own videos um i hope you guys enjoyed this sorry i was just thinking about how i'm going to do my highlight video it's i'm scared I'm so worried how I don't know it's a problem um, anyway that's a problem for another day not today I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up again please leave your comments down below and I will catch you in the next one bye